But let's go now to Guildford, which seems to be ahead in the race at the moment, or at least so we understand. Paul Griffiths is there. And in Guildford, there's certainly a, a real air of electric excitement. Here is Mr. Sam Weller, who's just spread his hands, is about to go over to collect the figures. Uh, there's just been a small amount of deliberation, just to let you know that the indications are that the Liberals have really jumped up here. Uh, last time the Liberal vote was uh, almost 9,000. It looks as though it's been doubled this time to something over 18,000. We'll find that out in just a moment. Uh, Mr. Weller, if I may just mention a word about him, the returning officer, before we receive the figures from him, is retiring after this, his eighth general election count, and he said he's definitely retiring this time. He said it last time, but uh, he is, in fact, tomorrow, four weeks, retiring from his job as town clerk here in Guildford, and this will be definitely his last stand on election night. And uh, the sitting member here, of course, is David Howell, Conservative David Howell, uh, who has been closely associated with Mr Heath's style of government. Mr Howell was the junior minister of state for Northern Ireland under William Whitelaw, and uh, he is now the Minister of State for Energy under Lord Carrington. The last time he had a 14,000 majority. This time, if that majority has been slimmed down, it looks as though it has gone to the Liberals. We'll uh, wait and see the figures in just a moment. They're writing them down. Mr Weller is leaning over the table, the uh, final returning officer's table, and coming to the microphone now. Not quite, but he's almost there for, Liber for, uh, for Guildford. Ladies and gentlemen, I, being the Deputy Acting Returning Officer for the Guildford constituency, here give by no hereby give notice that the total number of votes given for each candidate at the election was as follows. Jean Elizabeth Crow, 11,175. Christopher Jonathan Fox, 18,261. <laughs> David Arthur Russell Howell, 28,152. <laughs> and I declare that David uh, Arthur Russell Howell <laughs> has been duly elected to serve the Guildford constituency. And there's an 80.5% turnout in Guildford, that's up 8%. The Liberals, coming up to second place, have increased their vote by 13.8%, 31.7. Guildford tonight has shown clear conservative common sense. And I believe that the nation will, in the next 24 hours, follow its example. I think it is right that I should, first of all, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and you, Mr. Deputy Returning Officer, you, Mr. Deputy Returning Officer, for your achievement in getting such a very no, just speedy result. This is a remarkable achievement, and we congratulate you on it. So we should say well done to you, Mr. Deputy Returning Officer, but not only to you, but to all your staff who have fulfilled the most magnificent program, who have worked with amazing speed and have done excellently in conducting this election. I congratulate them as well most warmly. Well now, Robin Day again. Well, I have, um, have with me here three uh, noble guests who's had the good fortune uh, or misfortune not to have to fight in this election. Lord Windlesham, Lord Privy Seal, Lord Avebury, formerly Eric Lubbock, Vice Chairman of the Liberal Party, and Lord Davis of Leek, formerly a very articulate and well-known member of the House of Commons in the Labour Party. Lord Windlesham, you didn't look very happy during that Guildford results, and you don't look very happy now. On the contrary, I was delighted to see the first real result coming through after all these predictions, polls even after. The real election has come to an end when people are waiting to see what the result is. Uh, the result at Guildford was good for us, and most interesting, one of the most notable members of the government, David Howell, who did so well with Willie Whitehall in Northern Ireland, uh, is returned. A very liberal character, incidentally. It shows there are liberals in all parties, not just in one. But uh, granted that David Howell won, and it would indeed be a tragedy for you if Guildford was lost... Uh, did not uh, get won by a Conservative, but 
Can you see any hope from the Guildford result, which was such an indicator last time of Mr Heath getting his clear mandate? Well, it's a mistake to start talking about clear mandates and to read the result of an election into the first All result right. from one. All right, we won't do that. Eric right. Lubbock, you look a little more chip. Well, I was very pleased with that result, although, as David Windlesham says, you can't read anything into one result. Um, it was an extremely good poll for Chris Fox. Uh, the high point, 6% in 1920. 0.6% in 1929, Fox, who is um, an extremely good candidate, but fighting somebody with a great personality and strength, as David Windlesham has said, I think he did outstandingly well, and I expect to see this kind of result repeated in a great many constituencies. Now, unlike most of our guests at, in these little talks, you have your computer with you, I see. I have a little your, calculator. Your, your personal calculator. <laughs> uh, if this result, is re liberal result, is repeated all over the country, do you have an idea, of your own view, as to what, how many seats liberals might get? Oh, well, if 31.7% uh, would give us a very large, large number of seats, and my calculations don't extend up that far, but um, <coughs> I think it, this was a seat where we expected to do rather well. 100 seats? Oh, well over that. 29% um, yes. we get 117 seats. Yeah, you, you're hopeful of holding the balance of power now, are you? It's a possibility still at this stage. Well, uh, Lord Davis of Leek, what do you make of it? Well, there's nothing to be pontifical about. Guildford isn't a piece of political litmus paper like some of the seats. I could tell you I would win Guildford without having either computers or without the swingometer. But uh, I agree here with my colleagues. It's too soon to prognosticate and try and say mm. the result, but nevertheless, from uh, your point of view, Eric, this is very interesting. I don't see you getting seats. I take you back to the 1929 election, and I'll give you the possibility of a balance of power. But if we in, if Wilson can get a majority of three, we'll carry on for a couple of years with a majority of three come the Liberals, Hellfire or deep water. But uh, there's nothing yet to make me feel that there's a conservative government anywhere in the distance. Robert, I'm interested Thank you. to know why you <laughs> just, think... Just a moment, I've got to go back to Alistair Burnett, I think. Sorry. Sorry. I wonder, I, uh, Eric Lubbock would very much like to see the Torbay result again, because he didn't quite get it, and he's got it computed. I wonder, any chance of seeing that while I ask, while I ask Lord uh, Windlesham to say whether he, what he thinks of Robert McKenzie's view that Mr Heath is unlikely to get a clear majority tonight well, or tomorrow? We've only had six seats, and what matters is who wins seats, not who comes second. I think it's very early to start to make general predictions at this stage. Uh, Eric Lubbock, while we, we may get the Tor, the Tor Bay result again, it was Liberal got 20,755 votes. Well, I think, yes, it's too early. There it is. Here's the Torbay result coming up now. There you are. Now, what do you make of that, Eric? Yeah, no. Well, I think that's an outstanding result. I, I think this 80%. is absolutely splendid. It confirms what we've seen in the other seats that the Liberals have been fighting. We're getting far better results than we got in 64, which was the peak Liberal year since um, I can remember. And we're getting the sort of figures that go back to the 1920s, and particularly to the 1929 election when we had 59 seats. I think that the estimates that were made in advance are going to prove pessimistic. You remember I've been talking about over 40 seats, and I think that's certainly the likelihood on the figures we've been looking at. <coughs> well, Lord Davis, for the Labour Party, how do you see it? Well, I think the pattern, I think uh, it's too soon to make definite pattern, but the pattern is this. Whatever the computers and uh, the cephologists may say, the southeast of England the gin and martini belt and the commuters, they will gain seats, the Liberals will gain seats from the Conservatives. In the areas that do things with their hands and manufacture, you've had two craftsmen there, two political craftsmen, Stan Orm and uh, Frank Alone. Excellent ministerial timber is Stan Orm, a worker. And whatever Liberals stand there, the mythology of liberalism will not stand up against the practical politics that is put forward in these areas that produce your coal, your steel and your cotton. What do you think of the idea of uh, the possible possibility that uh, if Labour continues to, to do better than uh, the polls originally suggested that there might be a minority Labour government with the problem of sharing yeah. with the Liberals? Now this is quite a point that any, anybody with any political nous 
would have to agree with you this possibility stands. And that means there's a terrific responsibility, Eric, on uh, the Liberal Party in this transition period. And it will need, I don't mean this in a derogatory sense, a but party... Isn't, isn't there a responsibility also, if there's a Labour Prime Minister, to see if he can yes. win the cooperation of the Liberal Yes, exactly. The reality of the British position transcends the idiosyncrasies of the politicians at this moment. So you I'm think you're, you're really hinting, Lord Davis, aren't you, that Labour might have to come to terms with a strong Liberal membership in the House of Commons if it got to a Labour minority government? Well, now, look, I don't... You're uh, only in the Lords, aren't you? Yeah, I'm in the Lords. It's up there. But I do know the courage of our people in the Commons. We've done it. We would govern with a majority of three for 18 months right. at least. Thank you. Well, we'll come back to you later, gentlemen. Uh, Alistair?